talking about the argument from design. This argument claims that the existence of life in our universe is so improbable that the only reasonable explanation for how it got here is that it was intentionally placed here by an intelligent mind. Specifically, the argument goes like this. Premise 1. The universe is either designed or the result of chance or the result of natural law or the combination of chance and natural law. Premise 2. The universe is not the result of chance or natural law or the combination of both. Conclusion, therefore the universe is the result of design. Over the past few weeks, we've been talking about several factors that all have to come together in order for life to be possible, even in a universe that has all the right laws and constants. Now this week, I'm going to give a few final examples that deal with some very unique things about our particular planet. First, anyone who's looked at a globe will notice that the Earth is slightly tilted. This tilt is crucial because it's what's responsible for our seasons. For half of the year, the northern hemisphere is tilted more towards the sun, whereas for the other half of the year, the southern hemisphere is more pointed toward it. Now, other planets in our solar system also tilt, but there's one crucial difference. You see, their tilt changes over time and varies over a wide range. This leads to major temperature swings and is one factor that makes them incapable of sustaining life. So why does Earth's tilt remain relatively constant? That's actually the work of our moon. It just so happens that we have a moon that is just the right size and just the right distance from the Earth so that its orbit stabilizes our tilt at just about 23.5 degrees, the perfect amount for our seasons. But it actually does more than that. You see, our moon also slows down the Earth's rotation a bit. Now, if the moon were more massive than it is, it would actually slow down our rotation even more, resulting in longer days and longer nights. This would lead to unlivably extreme temperature variations between night and day. So we have the perfect moon to support life. It also turns out that we have a planet that has the perfect mass. See, a planet needs to have a certain mass in order to have an atmosphere. Our atmosphere is what protects us from cosmic radiation, so we are massive enough for that. But at the same time, we can't be too massive because the more mass a planet has, the stronger its surface gravity becomes. Eventually, gravity is too strong for mountains or even continents to push themselves up above the level of the water. You end up with a perfectly smooth planet covered in water. And despite what you might have seen in some science fiction movies, a planet covered in water is a dead planet. That's because even the life that lives underwater needs the nutrients that get washed down from the land in order to live. No land, no nutrients throughout the water, no life. I've thrown a lot out there the last few weeks, and I know sometimes when we look at things piece by piece, we tend to lose sight of the big picture. So next week, we're going to sum up everything we've talked about, about our universe and our location within it. And we're going to see how all of this relates to William Dembski's three factors for the design inference. Contingency, complexity, and specificity. Make sure you join us then. God bless.